I'm here at Whiten Woods in Oxfordshire and this is a place that I first became aware of when I was studying zoology at university. Now at first glance it seems like any other corner of British woodland but if you take a closer look you'll start to notice all sorts of weird and wonderful things. There are tags on the trees, the bird boxes are numbered, there are towering walkways in the canopies and there are strange bits of technology of all different shapes and sizes half hidden in the undergrowth. And that's because White and Woods is the outdoor laboratory of Oxford University. And this year it's celebrating 75 years of world changing research. It may be bright and sunny right now, but the animal I'm about to meet is fast asleep. So Danny, you've got bats up there then? Yep, there's a couple of Dorbentons in this tree roost. The fact that they use the bird boxes is a really great opportunity here with thousands of boxes to um, follow the bats, who's in a roost from one day to the next, how they move and who they share boxes with from day to day. So that's several hundred individuals every year that live here and they're here from May to September. And is it unusual you being here during the day? Is most of your work done here late at night? No, I'm a daytime bat worker. Oh, yeah. Other bat workers will <laughs> laugh at work, me for being then? a daytime bat worker. So I study them. I am the BFG of bats. <laughs> I get them out of bed and put them back to bed. I'm venturing deeper into the forest now and somewhere around here should be a massive pile of earth. In fact, here we go, right here. So this, this hole is a badger set. And Tanisha and Nadine, you guys are both working on badgers. Yeah. And what is it about badgers that you love so much? I, I think it's the fact that they are so elusive and that there's so much we don't know about them. And especially in Wytham, which is the highest density badger population in Europe. You can look at their life history and study their behaviour, their immune system, their hormones. And this is all part of a project that goes back many, many years. Oh yeah, it? it's yeah. a very long-term research project. So our database is really huge of every single badger. All those studies feed into each other. So if you understand about bats and badgers, it teaches you something about food sources and predators. And if you want to know more about the animals, you need to know about the plants as well. This is one of 160 such plots scattered through the wood in a systematic grid. And we've been recording the vegetation in them and measuring the trees in them since 1974. Or rather, my supervisor set them up. <laughs> I only took them on in the 1980s. So from that we can then look at how the vegetation has changed. So down somewhere around here there is a little bit of bramble. And yet in 1974 it covered a third of the wood. Now it's difficult to find. It's hard to imagine. Isn't yeah. It? yeah, and so these sort of gradual changes you can only pick up if you've got this very long-term measure of how the woods have been. All of those plants provide a wonderful habitat for a variety of different animals. And since 1948, researchers here at Whiteham have been finding out just a little bit more about the small mammals living deep in the undergrowth. What sort of discoveries have you made over the time that you've been researching here? Basically, um, how hard it is to study these little animals. <laughs> they vary a lot within the year and between years. So they are very challenging to study. So I suppose this is where the technology comes in ours. This yes. is your area of expertise, isn't it? So what, what have we got here? What is this? This here is called the mouse detector. It works like a, a metal detector, but it detects mice. And that's okay. based on the mice having a tag under their skin. It says beep Perfect. and sends the data to my phone. These things sit on top of mouse burrows all across the grid. Okay. Uh, basically like Big Brother watching. <laughs> <laughs> and every time a mouse goes in or out of their burrow, this thing reads their tag number yet again. So awesome. then we get an idea who is living with whom to build up social networks. Incredible. And who knows what you'll be doing in the future? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably like robotic mice or something. <laughs> The longest running study here focuses on birds and it began way back in 1947. 
And the bird you've got in your hand is a, is a great hit, it's a you know, familiar uh, golden bird. And we shouldn't hold her for too no, long No, she's to probably, she may even be carrying an egg at this moment, and so the sooner she goes back and gets on with her job for the, for the day, the better, really. Oh, <laughs> <Go on. laughs> she's off. <laughs> That's what she thinks Fantastic. about. Fantastic. I always feel very nervous when you've got one of those in the hand. But uh, can you talk to me a little bit about the, the bird research that's been going on here? I mean, it is, it's world famous, isn't it? Well, we like to think so, yes. <laughs> Um, I mean, this little bird that I've just let go is, is, a, is a super bird for studying because they're very tolerant when we catch them. They come back to the nest and they carry on behaving as they would do and they stay here the whole year. And what is the value of a study that has been as long term as this one has? First of all, uh, we can carry on doing new things with them because there are new technologies. These guys are using uh, tracking tags which we never had available in, in, in the past. So there are new questions all the time. And the other is that the, the habitat has been changing. It's not just that the local woodland habitat is changing, but there's global warming. The birds are now nesting about a fortnight earlier than they were when the study was started. So there's going to be big changes in the woodland, which we're in a position, hopefully, to, to monitor what happens when it happens. Finally, we have a piece of research that's only been going on for about eight years, but it could just tell us what the woods were like a long, long time ago. And the great thing about the fen is it takes you back in time. What you're seeing is very light and very white. Right, and that, what is that? That's tufa, so it's calcium carbonate. But this was taken about 1.9 metres down. Okay. So that's probably seven to 8,000 years old. Wow. And you are the first person to have seen that. <laughs> And if I That's break awesome. it open, yeah. there's a lot of preservation that goes on. Things like pollen and snail shells. Look at those. Oh yeah? Oh, perfect. So you could chart in time what's happened yes. by just looking at these exactly. heat samples. Exactly. Yeah. From that we know approximately what was going on back to around 10 to 11,000 years ago. So the Fen at Whiteham is a historical archive research around Whiteham is very recent, mm. but none of it really knows what's happened in the past. And with lots of other data, if we put it all together, we should be able to predict approximately what would happen in the future. So if we've learnt that much already, just imagine what scientific surprises Whiteham Woods has in store for us over the next 75 years.